So what exactly is a black beaver in tan? Some of you may be thinking there's actual components, bits and pieces of an actual beaver in this fly. Well, there isn't. Join me and I'll show you. Hi everyone, I'm Phil Rowley and welcome to my YouTube channel. If you've dropped by previously and to watch some of my other fly tying and fly fishing videos, welcome back. If this is your first time here, look around. There's lots of other fly tying and fly fishing videos to watch. If you enjoy the content, please consider subscribing. If you do subscribe, don't forget to hit that bell so you get notifications of future videos. Today, the black beaver and tan. It's really just another woolly bugger variation but a pretty darn good one. It's one I first learned about fly fishing the lakes in the southwest region of Manitoba. It's since become a constant companion in my fly box whenever situations dictate a woolly bugger. It's a great suggestive searching fly. Don't forget to stick around at the end of the video because I'm going to give you some of the ways I like to present this fly whenever I'm on the water. So it's a simple fly. Let's get at it. Here's the recipe. Don't forget to click the links in the description below so you can see what materials I've used and where to get them. Let's get tying. So let me introduce you to the black beaver and tan. The hook I'm going to use is a Daiichi 1720 number no. 8. I believe this is a three extra long streamer hook. Onto the hook I've slid a 1 8 brass bead. You could certainly use a tungsten bead just to give it a little bit of sink and jigging action and behind the bead I'm going to attach my tying thread which in this case is uh, 70 denier UTC 70 in black dress the shank so we have a nice thread base good traction for our materials bring that tying thread right back up near the back of the bead for the tail, we're going to use a black marabou plume, and I like plumes like this one that have lots of individual fibers on each of the barbules of the feather as well. I'm going to stroke all these together, and we're going to tie in a tail that's approximately shank length. So I've got that measurement, I'll slide my hands back to where my thread is hanging, and that's going to be my cut point. couple of wraps around the marabou to make sure it's tied in and then I've noticed I've not let go of it and I just slide my thumb and forefinger back of my left hand I'm elevating the marabou ever so slightly and pulling on it so it's under a bit of tension and that makes sure it doesn't twist or roll around the shank and your tails tied in and I've got nice smooth foundation that's going to move and breathe very well. I'm going to put a little bit of flash alongside the marabou. And one of my favorite mater uh, flash materials is this Flashaboo 6904. I believe it's called Ice Blue Pearl. So I've got a little notch in the package. It allows me to reach in and just isolate. I wonder if I can pull out a couple, just only a, a few strands. A little bit more than I want, but I can see how I pulled them out. And I'm going to take two of those strands trim them from the clump, moisten them by running them through my lips. I'm going to take the tying thread, advance it forward a little bit, get the flash of tied in. I've got a length, a longer length, at least shank length minimum sticking out in front. The majority is behind so I'm just going to start winding the um, two strands that are back of the initial tying point, so they're just starting to tuck along the sides of the hook. And then I'm going to come back up, grab the other two that were forward of the initial tying point, and hold them along the back side. And just using gentle thread wraps, good firm tension, but just no, you don't have to go 100 miles an hour, and just secure both the strands along the sides of the tail and just trim them slightly larger, long, sorry, longer than the marabou 
and we've got our marabou tail in place with a little attractive flash along the sides. The body is what gives this fly its name and it's variegated chenille, black and brown or dark brown and I believe this color was originally sold as a black beaver and tan color, I'm not 100% sure but that's the color we use, just black and brown variegated chenille. I've stripped one end to expose the thread core of the chenille and we're just going to secure that on and then we're also going to secure some wire for a rib and also secure this before the body material doesn't really matter, get them on and then we're going to advance our tying thread forward to the rear of the bead we're going to take our chenille body material and start winding forward, close touching turns, one right next door to the other. Every couple of turns I'll give it a good firm pull. Make sure it's nice and tight. Just build up a nice even body. Again that's why we tied that tail in all the way along the length so we don't have any lumps or bumps to worry about. Creates a nice even profile. A couple of wraps over top of the chenille. A couple of wraps front directly behind the bead. So the black beaver and tan is really just a woolly bugger. Right? Just a variation. There's specials and all kinds of things that end up, well, it's just a woolly bugger, but that's what we've got here. So the, the hackle is just a black saddle, or a, in this case this is grizzly dyed black. It just gives it a little bit of uh, uh, contrast in there. It's, it's subtle. And I'm just going to hold this feather up right by the exposed stem right behind the bead and lock it in place. Fold that stem back a little bit, trim off the excess. And I've tied this feather in so that the, um, the shiny side or the most prominently marked side of the feather is facing the front of the fly. So it'll, it'll make, when we wind this feather backwards over the body and palmer it, it will the fibers will naturally flow back. So I'm going to make one wrap behind the bead, second wrap, and that's going to help act as a bit of a pusher, if you will, and uh, that'll create like a hydro uh, dynamic disturbance, which will help animate the tail when we move the fly through the water, and then just nice open turns all the way down, and making sure that with each wrap, it's evenly spaced, Each wrap is evenly spaced and I'm wrapping vertically and making sure there's no twist in the feathers. All the way back to the base and then I take my wire and I put a half turn in it, grab it from the underside and sort of wiggle it through and I'm going to use that to secure the wire in place. And then just work that wire through and this will make your Woolly buggers, anytime you tie a woolly bugger, this is always the way I do it. Uh, you can use wire, you could use uh, tippet material, but what you're doing is reinforcing that hackle. So if a fish chews this fly, your bugger is not going to unravel completely. A fish has to basically break this feather in between every segment, so it makes it for very, a very durable woolly bugger, or in this case, black beaver and tan. So I'm just going to come over top of the bead, a couple of wraps over the wire, pull that back, a couple in front. Place my thumbnail right on that tie-off junction. Try not to block too much light. And break away the excess wire. Come in at this point and trim away the feather. All right, now we're just going to finish the fly off. A little bit of super glue on the thread. Pull the feathers back to expose the back of the bead. Let that. Carry, let the uh, glue be carried into the base of the fiber by the thread. Come in, add a whip finish. Three, four, five. Trim. And your woolly bugger, or in this case, black beaver and tan, is complete. Great little fly. Did really well with this on Henry's Lake. Let me show you how I fished it. 
So now that the tying is done, let's talk about how I like to present flies such as the black beaver and tan and other woolly bugger variations and leeches and even small minnows. These are flies I generally like to fish in the shallows, less than 10 feet deep. My fly lines are going to be sinking lines, whether it's a slow sinking hover at its paltry one inch per second, all the way down to a type three or type five that sink at three and five inches respectively. My retrieve is going to be governed, of course, by the depth, but primarily by the activity level of the fish and the water temperature. The less active the fish are, or the lower the temperatures, the slower I go and the slower the sink rate of the line. Otherwise, I'll just be hanging up all the time. If the water temperatures are within the fish's activity zone, generally about that uh, 50 to 65 degree Fahrenheit, and the fish are active and willing to chase, then you can get away with a faster sinking line, such as a type three or five, because of the fast retrieve speed will keep you from hanging up. My retrieves are either a hand twist retrieve, slow to fast, or a strip retrieve, four to six inch poles, or long one foot poles with prolonged pauses. Those are my primary presentation options when I fish flies such as the black beaver and tan. Give them a try. Hopefully they help you improve your catch rate using this fly and others just like it.